God, today we're making sound panels. My fan ain't ruining your audio. Yes. So today we're building sound panels for. The <laughs> we're building them from scratch. <laughs> you okay back there? Need a reflector. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, we're yeah. clamshell. Yeah. Oh, lighting yeah. here. There's no light up top to reflect off. We watched Gerald Undone's video where he did kind of like a deep dive into sound panels with this professional sound guy who builds professional sound panels, but we're cheap and didn't want to pay for professional sound panels, especially because we, we need, need a lot of them. We need a lot of them. We need like, well, we have enough materials to build 12 today, but we're probably actually gonna need more than that because we're gonna want to outfit the drone factory. If you have proof concept. 12, yeah, exactly. We're going, <laughs> a 2% battery, Chris. So we're building 12 sound panels. We're gonna film it. At the end of this video, we're gonna show, we're gonna demo, <laughs> off. <laughs> At the end, oh my god, I will murder you in your sleep. At the end of this video, we're gonna. <laughs> no more playing the workshop. At the end of this video, we're gonna find out, we're gonna do some tests and find out if the sound panels actually make a difference and if it's worthwhile to actually build them. If you guys wanna know how we build these sound panels, start to finish, step by step, materials, all of the things, we have a full step by step blog post in the description box. You can check it out and you can build your own. Okay, you can go back to your standing now. Oh, by the way, before we build these sound panels, we need to clean up this garage. I'm wearing a lapel mic because we're in the basement slash I'm in the basement, I'm the only one here. We don't have any sound treatment done yet. The closer you can get the mic to your mouth, the better it sounds. So right now I'm using this lapel mic because this is what the audio sounds like with the mic off the camera without any sound treatment done and the heater's on. So today we're making 12 sound panels. I picked up 12 sheets of Owens Corning 703 fiberglass insulation. It's one inch thick and it's two feet by four feet in dimension. So we went to the hardware store and we picked up one by three, eight foot pine. It's really difficult to get like a true one inch measurement on materials from the hardware store. So what we're gonna do is rip down the one by threes to a true one inch. So it's gonna be three quarter by one inch. We're gonna have our four foot lengths here of rip down one by three. We're gonna attach those to the top and we're gonna glue that and we're also gonna use crown staples to staple the boards together. So we're gonna do two in each side and that should make our frame. So later we're gonna wrap everything with the speaker fabric, drop our insulation in and then coat the back. Coat the back? We're gonna cover the back with landscape fabric. So the plan for the actual studio is we have two filming areas. We have this one that I'm in now, which is not done. Temporary background, this is gonna be a black slat wall eventually with some lights, it's gonna be dope. Then we have this over here, which you've probably seen in the last vlog, which I will link up here. And that's gonna be our couch filming area. And it's also gonna be where we're gonna record the podcast. This is this full studio, kind of is this shape. And then there's like a hallway here, and then it goes into the drone factory. This is where our main filming area is, and this is where our unboxing table is. So we're basically going to put sound panels on the ceiling, six of them here, leaving room for an overhead rig for our mic. And then on this side, the unboxing table is gonna be here. So this wall here is where I'm sitting right now. So there's some plants here. So we're gonna be doing four panels over the table with room for an overhead rig here. Now, right here is gonna be backdrops. Right here, we're gonna be doing some kind of wall separator. And this wall separator will have sound treatment. And then we also have a steel beam that separates these two spaces. And we have clamps and sound blankets slash moving blankets that we're gonna be able to use to clip off here and separate these two spaces for additional treatment. So that's kind of the plan. For now, we're gonna start with that. We are gonna be doing a big rug on the floor here with a couch and we're gonna be doing a big rug on the floor here as well. And I ordered a bunch of these clips and I've got like five moving blankets from when we moved here. So I have heard that you can use those for sound treatments. They're not as good as acoustic blankets, but we have these laying around so we may as well use them and they're gray so they match. And because the ceiling is open, we're able to also clamp them to the ceiling here as well if we need to, and here as well if we need to. The blankets won't look great, but hopefully it will help with the sound. All right, let's do it. Yeah, so we've got the boards ripped down one inch thicknesses. So we now have a three quarter inch thick by one inch 
true one inch. So we've ripped them all down and now we will cross cut them with our cross cut sled that fits into the table saw and just bzz, 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 bzz. There we go, let's do it. Why you pull out the side of your mouth like that? Like Mr. Whoa, Wad. Uh, I feel like I can blow harder outside of my mouth. <laughs> So I cut this board to four feet exactly, clamped it on, and now I just basically line up this. Bang on, buddy. All right, I took my four foot jig, cut it down to 25 and a half inches, and made a new jig. That looks pretty close to me, if I do say so myself. Anyway, okay, okay I hope it's 25 and a half inches, because that's what we're cutting them all to. You yeah, should. 24 plus two widths, each being a three quarters. Three quarters times two is 1.5 inches. 24 plus 1.5 is 25 and a half. Boom, there you go, math lady gift. Holy shit. One of my very first memories of a woodworking project was a secret project that I wanted to do with my dad. I was like, I can't tell you what I'm making or what I want to make, but I want to make something out of wood. Probably, I don't know, 10 years old. And he was probably like, oh, I get to do father-son bonding time. I told him we need uh, a two by four sandpaper and chain. And then I told him that I wanted to take the two by four, sand it into a circle. And he's like, oh, why don't you just buy a wooden dowel? I'm like, oh, okay, thanks dad. I bought dowel and, he, and I bought chain. And he was like, what are you making? And I said, I need something to attach it. And he said, wait a second, son. You're not making something to bop people over the head with, are you? <laughs> And I was like, uh, you mean nunchucks, dad? Yeah, that's what I'm making. That's why I couldn't tell you because you wouldn't let me build them. He's like, all right, we'll make nunchucks. It was a great father-son Wait, project. you guys did make it? I thought he wouldn't let you make them. No, we made them. Oh, that was a sword out of the tinfoil saw. I was obsessed with swords when I was a kid. They don't make me feel as special inside as I used to. <laughs> you know, like when you're a kid, things like... <laughs> Sorry, what do you mean? Let's continue. Things make you feel special inside, like when you experience them. Like for me, when I was a kid, that was uh, RC planes, radio controlled airplanes. I wanted one so bad. Oh my God, you haven't um, changed. You know those little color form stickers where you stick them and restick them? Huh? Color forms. Nope. Not to be confused with chloroform. All right, Google it. Felt special about the, the space one. I love the space one. Paintball guns, that's kind of getting older. I love paintball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, swords. So anyway, okay, back to the woodworking project. When I was a kid, ninjas. I loved ninjas. Like it just gave you a feeling of joy. Almost like a little bit of anxiety, but like excitement, you know? Like love. Oh, like love. That's the way I used to feel when I used to get chips. Yes. I still feel like that when I get chips. We have a whole stack of frames made, all identical, two feet by four feet on the inside to fit that insulation. We've already bought speaker fabric from the, where, where did we get it from? Joanne. Joanne's by. The speaker fabric in one dimension is already the perfect size. So we just basically are cutting the length off. We're leaving, I don't know, about three inches on each side overhang. <laughs> I start basically by tacking in uh, one side. And I usually just do three. Just a little bit of tension, just enough to start getting sort of these Ripples. He's not doing it too tight, not doing it too loose. What does that even mean? Just right. So now you got this little tension line here, just a little bit of buckling of the fabric, and then as you do this dimension, it'll turn into these little corners. It'll di make a diamond. It's working back and forth. Good luck writing this into a blog post. Well, hospital corners, just like make them like you'd make a bed. That's exactly what I wrote in the blog post. Is it really? Yes. <laughs> I'm just gonna do like a light spray of spray adhesive on the inside. I think normal sound panels are made to be like two inches thick with like rock wool insulation, but I really don't like the look of them. I think they look too thick. I went for the one inch because I, th I think it looks better. Nice tight fit. Don't want to press too much on the insulation because you don't want to like compress it. So now we're gonna take the landscape fabric, which is a tip I uh, picked up from Gerald Undone's video, which I'll link up here. And we're gonna line the back of it. We figured lining it after the fact, after we wrapped it, would be the cleanest install and it kind of gives a nice finished look on the back. Stretching the speaker fabric before you put the insulation, I found gives you a better control over the tension and gives you a cleaner wrap. Nice clean looking back. 
an even cleaner looking front. Great. All right. Four down, only eight more to go. Okay, so we're back in the studio. We have all the sound panels taken down and we're gonna do a little bit of a test to see if the sound panels actually make a difference. But then later we're also gonna add some moving blankets around the space to help with controlling some of the sound. So what you're listening to right now is the Rode Video Micro on top of the A6400, which is our main angle. And this mic is the Rode Video Mic NTG, which is attached to this camera over here. And this mic is on a boom arm, which is about 15 inches from my mouth. And the Rode Video Micro is... 44 inches. 44 inches away from my mouth. So the key to getting good audio is to get your mic as close to the subject as possible. And we've been using the Rode Video Micro for a long time, and I think it sounds pretty good, but the NTG mic is definitely more directional and works really good for a boomed scenario. So I'm gonna say the same thing, and we're gonna show you what it sounds like with the mic 44 inches away, with the mic 15 inches away, and then we're gonna add the sound panels, and then after we add the sound panels, we're gonna add some acoustic blankets. They're actually moving blankets because we're too cheap to buy acoustic blankets, and we already have them laying around. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Now we're gonna put up the sound panels and see what that sounds like. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. We're gonna toss up a few sound blankets now to help with the reverb. And we basically have a big beam going right across directly behind this mic here. So we're gonna put up some sound blankets across the side there and some along the side here. And then we're gonna see how that sounds. Ready? You're not gonna be able to hear me, but this is what they look like. So this is the setup where we have six sound panels on the ceiling. We have sound blankets around the perimeter of the room. And then we have a few of the additional panels that we made earlier in this video kind of placed where we're probably gonna hang them. Still doing some tests to see where they are best suited. So this is kind of like closer to the final setup. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. It actually sounds different in here now. It definitely doesn't sound as echoey, like the sound waves are bouncing all over. It does sound like there's some sort of absorption happening. If you're gonna be able to notice them, I don't know. Sometimes just getting the mic close enough in any scenario is good enough. Chris is coming in. All right, I'm swapping out. <laughs> She's like, move the over, man. Get out. <laughs> this is my channel. You're not oh. dedicated to this YouTube channel. You're no. not dedicated. We also should probably mention that the placement of these sound panels is by no means scientific. We are not audio people. We're not audio experts. We're just making DIY sound panels because we think it'll help with reverb. Don't look at this as the de facto guide. Um, there's probably people who are way more well-versed and qualified <laughs> yes. that can give you more instruction on that. But we're just basically covering all the hard reflective surfaces. I mean, there's so much more. People talk about like bass traps and there's all sorts of different ways to modify sound. Again, I, we are not experts. Why are, you, why are you sitting like that towards me? You're like this. Because I'm pushing my breast in. I don't want you. Can you sit like a normal person? Every time I go to edit the video, you're like this. You're like, hi, hey, welcome back to our channel today. Stop making fun of me. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> no, wait, no, no, wait. I need you for math. Well, it's about $25 a panel once you consider the landscape fabric and like dividing out the hooks because you're going to buy a, a pack of 50 hooks. Yeah. And it's like $5. So whatever, like it's literally yeah. pennies. Less than $30 a panel. Yeah. So plus your sweat equity. It took us about two hours to build the frames. And it probably took us like maybe five or six hours to wrap everything and put everything together and finish the panels and probably another hour to hang them. Now we haven't hung all of them yet because we only have six hung here and we're gonna hang some over the unboxing table and we're gonna add a rug as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, hopefully it was worth the effort. Okay, so what's your prediction? My prediction is that this setup with the uh, sound blankets is gonna sound the best. I think you're gonna notice a massive difference between the boomed mic. Mics always sound better the closer you get them to your mouth. My predictions are if this is sort of baseline right here, only putting the ceiling sound panels is gonna have that much improvement. And then putting the sound blankets up is gonna be a more market improvement. I think the improvement is gonna be more seen on the micro, which is on top of the camera further away than on the video mic NTG, which is closer. You're gonna see less difference the closer the mic is to your mouth. We're gonna go and relook at this footage and then see if the sound panels actually made a difference, if they were worth the $30 each and the effort to make them, or if a few like $10 moving blankets would be best kind. <laughs> yeah, some, if, if these sound panels don't make any difference at all. And it's just the shitty moving blankets that we bought. Okay, so we just reviewed the footage. I don't know, those, those were kind of surprising results, weren't they? It was kind of what we expected, but not exactly. So the first thing that we realized is that the placement of the microphone 
that was by far the major factor that determined how good the audio sounded, far more than the sound treatment. But we knew that, we knew that. Yeah, that wasn't a surprise to us. Always try to get the mic as close to the source as possible. That by and large will make the greatest difference in how your audio sounds. As far as treatment is concerned, obviously the untreated environment sounded the worst and the full treatment with the blankets plus the sound panels sounded the best. We predicted that the microphone that was further away was gonna have the most dramatic improvement with the full sound treatment as compared to the mic that was closer. But I think when you look at them back to back, they actually sound like they have a similar degree of improvement, but of course the mic that's closer sounds better in all takes. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Whereas the mic that's further away just sounds crappy in all the takes. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So when you're listening to each take, they incrementally get better, and it can actually kind of be hard to really appreciate a difference, but when you compare the no treatment to full treatment, that's when you can see the biggest difference. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Okay, so the question still remains, is it worth it to go through all this hassle of either buying or creating these sound panels. And the advice that I give you is if your sound panels or sound treatment is gonna be in the shot, there's no doubt that sound panels look more professional and look better than just blankets hung up. But if the sound treatment is outside the frame, it really doesn't matter all that much. All right, so this is a bit of a different video for us because we never do sound tests or anything like that. So if you're interested in more information on how exactly we built this with step-by-step -step process, check the link in the description box below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. We will see you on the next one. Bye. Question, what is the description box? Sports, sports, sports. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Just go. Oh. And then this is gonna be the what? NTG and this is gonna be the... You look like you're is, doing a rap. This is how my brain works. Sticks. Martial arts or double sticks. Or, ever have double sticks, remember these? I was so good at them, I could do twirls and flips like that. I'm not surprised you're good at them. It seems like something you'd be really good at. It. What are we doing? How are we filming this video?